Story 22. I walked in on my girlfriend lying about me to her friend. I, 23 male, and my girlfriend, 24 female Brie, have been together for about two and a half years. We started discussing marriage about five months ago, but I haven't proposed. She seemed happy, and I thought we were destined for the whole family thing, so I recently bought a ring. About a week ago, I left for work, then returned home when I found out that the restaurant I work at didn't have running water due to some issue out of our control. The owner and my boss were there, sending everyone home. Bree doesn't work weekends, so she had the day off. When I walked in, I could hear her muffled voice in the kitchen, like she was talking to someone. I started walking towards the kitchen when I distinctly heard the voice of one of her female friends asking when she planned to tell me to get a real job and stop freeloading off of her. This stopped me in my tracks in the middle of the front room. I could feel my heart pounding, so I sat down on the couch and decided to listen to the rest of the conversation. I just sat there, holding my phone at arm's length to record the conversation. Bree laughed and said it was nice that she had me under her thumb since she paid the bills. This was a complete lie because every one of the utilities was in my name, and the lease on our apartment was also in my name. Bree came to live with me after we started dating and wasn't on the lease. She did pay half of the rent and chip in for some of the utilities, but it's a set amount that doesn't cover half. It was a simple roundup on the rent to help. Bree does make more money than I do, but she has an expensive car payment for her Lexus, and she's constantly buying clothes and who knows what else. I make pretty good money from my job, mostly from tips, since it's an upscale restaurant in a well-to-do area of town. As I sit on the couch, her friend Jen asks if I'm at least good in bed. Bree says that when I'm inspired, I can get her finished. She's laughing while saying this. Now they are both laughing, and then Bree says that I keep trying to get her to do anal. This just floored me, as I have never asked her about doing that. Her friend just makes an you comment, and they keep laughing. Bree's friend called me her special perv, and Bree laughed harder. Then Jen says her husband is stupid, but at least he's useful in bed. She then goes on a tangent, ripping into her husband on all sorts of shallow crap, making fun of him for whatever petty reason she can come up with. I know her husband John, and he's a really good guy. He's hardworking, good-looking, and not at all stupid. I'm just sitting there on the couch fuming when Jen gets up and tells her she needs to get back home before her pathetic husband comes home. Jen walks around the corner into the front room, where I'm sitting, holding my phone. As she walks into the room, she's surprised to see me, and her eyes lock with mine. Bree follows her and comes to a stop right next to her. Jen turned and walked out the door without saying another word. Bree's eyes were wide in shock, and she was visibly shaking. She starts asking me how long I've been home when I stood up and walked away from her without answering. As I walked up the stairs, Bree was babbling about joking around and not taking anything she said personally. I stopped and turned around. Bree was hurrying to keep up and ran into me. I looked down at her, our faces separated by a couple steps on the stairs, and asked her, does that include lying to her friends about me asking her for anal? Her face goes white and she starts doing a goldfish imitation. Then I asked her if I was so disappointing in bed and a total deadbeat making her pay for everything. Why was she staying with me? I'm not proud of it, but my voice rose and I was yelling at her by the end. I told her she didn't have to worry about having such a terrible boyfriend. I stormed upstairs, packed a bag, grabbed the ring box from the dresser, and walked back downstairs. Bree was still crying, begging me to forgive her. I took the ring box, opened it, and showed her the ring, then snapped it close and put it in my pocket. Bree started sobbing, begging me to talk to her. I left her that way and walked out the door. While packing, I remembered what Bree's friend had been saying about her husband, so I decided to drop by and see him before heading out of town to see my parents. When I got there, I parked and approached the door. Jen opened it, came out, and started begging me to please not ruin her marriage and some other garbage I ignored. John came out of the house visibly confused as to why his wife was crying and upset. He asked me what was happening and Jen started screaming for me to stop. I stepped back from Jen and took out my phone. I told John I had a recording of his wife and Bree he needed to hear. Jen was going crazy trying to stop me from getting close enough to let John hear my phone. 
John stepped around her, took my phone, walked away from us, and listened. Jen was pestering him until he yelled at her to back off. When John got to the point where Jen was calling him stupid and only good for sex, he stood there stiff as a board, just taking in all the petty crap Jen was saying about him. In the end, when Jen said she needed to go home to her pathetic excuse for a husband, John turned, looked at me, and simply said, Thanks, man. I could tell he sent himself the recording, handed me the phone, thanked me again, and walked back into the house. Jen followed him, still crying, making excuses. Strangely enough, Bree hadn't left my apartment when I returned a week later. I asked my boss for some time off, got the thumbs up, and stayed away to let Bree move out. Bree sent me texts non-stop for the first few days and left a half dozen VMs. I read and listened to all of them but never spoke to her. The rest of the week, she sent me three to four texts a day with good mornings, I'm sorry, and I love you. The last thing she would do every night was call and leave me a voicemail telling me, good night, I love you. When I got home, I walked into the apartment to find the house neatly cleaned and Bree standing at the door. She was dressed nicely, like something from an old painting of the perfect wife. It was sort of surreal, and I was staring at her confused. Bree never wore full-length dresses. We had always kept our home clean enough not to embarrass ourselves if someone dropped by, but never spotless. Kind of embarrassing to admit. The entire apartment looked like it had been professionally cleaned. We share our locations, and I never bothered to turn that off, so I'm sure she was tracking me by my phone. I asked Bree why she was still there, and she simply told me that I had never told her to leave. She walked over and gave me a light hug that I did not return. She looked sad, and I could tell she was tired. I could tell she was cooking something by the amazing smell coming from the kitchen. Bree was a pretty good cook when she put effort into it. I got home yesterday, and I'm sitting upstairs right now at my computer, duh, and have no clue what I should do. Bree says, You're right. I was wrong to do that. Whenever I try to get mad at her, she accepts full responsibility without any defensiveness and apologizes for being so immature. It's like she's doing some emotional rock-paper-scissors thing where she gets to play hers after I play mine. I'm super confused, still hurt, and want to be mad enough to kick her out. But right now, my feelings are all over the place. I still don't understand the comment about anal. I still have an ugly wound over some of the things she said, but it's hard to say they constitute dumping her, meaning she's taken full responsibility without any pushback or gaslighting. What sort of measured response should I take? She's never been manipulative in the past. She's always been a what-you-see-is-what-you-get kind of person. She's always been polite and thoughtful. I don't know what I'll do right now, but I think I need to give it some time to see how this goes. John did text me to say that he is leaving Jen. It sounds like they had problems with their relationship before Jen's meltdown. I feel bad for John since he's a nice guy. I have no doubt he'll bounce back. I'll need to ensure Bree understands that Jen will never be welcome in my home again. For me, it feels like Jen was the catalyst of chaos, but I don't know why Bree bought into what she was doing. I still have the ring, but I don't plan on giving it to her, or at least if we stay together, she will have to earn my trust again before I do. I'm sorry this isn't a story of any epic revenge. It's just that of a regular guy with relationship problems. If, for some reason, this gets stupid, I'll do an update. If you have any constructive feedback, I'd love to read what you have to say. My friends seem to be divided pretty evenly on what I should do with half wanting me to dump her and the other half saying I should give her another chance. I only post new and unique content. Please like and subscribe.